another which one doesn't belong. So take a second, look at these, and decide which of these don't belong and why. Okay, these aren't something that deals, excuse me, with the reflection. There is no reflection being seen, so that would be why that one doesn't belong. What was another one? Reflection affects what part? The slope or the widest side? The slope. So of these, is anything affecting the widest side? The shift. So that's why that one doesn't belong. It's the only thing that's affecting the widest side. Okay. So we know these then have to deal with the slope. Why wouldn't one belong? We talked about the reflection. The other part that the slope deals with is the steepness. How would you describe this steepness? More steeper, steeper, yes. Steeper than, let's say, this one. I don't really know what the slope is, but I know it's negative. Uh, I'm assuming the slope didn't change here, but the wind step did, and it's definitely steeper than this one, sure. So that means this one is less steep, yes. All right, so make sure you're not losing that vocab that you continuously use them. Um, we'll be kind of reviewing some of that today when we get into graphing some other things. All right. If you would like to talk about it algebraically, some of you didn't, but that's okay because we're going to talk about it today. So flip onto the back. And then we're going to find the x and y intercepts algebraically. We'll do a few together, you'll do some, and then um, you'll have a chance to work on some delta math for a little bit. Something also changed with Delta Max, so I have to show you what that. Alright, so if you got to the part where it talked about how to do this algebraically, you have to remember two things. If you're looking for an x-intercept, your y value is zero. So you don't necessarily have to write this down if you remember, but it might help. And then the opposite, if you're looking for a y-intercept, your x value is zero. So those are important things we need to know in order to do this. And this kind of gets into some solving that we're going to be doing more in the next unit. So you will be doing both, but not at the same time. Did you need to charge for that? Great, so I'm going to find the x-intercept first by replacing my y value is zero. And I'm going to use parentheses, not multiplication signs or the dot. And then I'm going to simplify and solve this. So I know zero times anything is zero. So that just goes away. So I would really just be solving for x. Anyone remember how I would solve this for x? What would I do? Add zero. Well, I could really get rid of the zero. 
the zero doesn't even matter, you know. Trina, you were gonna say so if you want, you can just get rid of that zero, that way it's not a bother, you're not thinking about it. But yes, we're going to divide both sides by 8. So that x equals, say, 3. And then we would write that as an order pair. 3 comma 0. And then we're going to do the same thing for the y. Do you have any questions so far? Alright, so I'm going to start from the beginning again, but instead of putting 0 in for y, I'm going to put 0 in for x. So you're always putting 0 in for the opposite of what you're trying to solve for. We know this is going to become 0. I'm not going to get rid of the 0 this time, but I'm just going to go on to the next step, divide both sides by 3. y equals 8. So that order pair would be 0, 8. Sometimes you get the opposite. We had 8 and 3 and it became 3 and 8. Sometimes that's not the case, like in number 2. Okay. I'm going to speed it up a little bit by taking out a step. I still want to see that you're putting zero in for whatever you're solving for. So for the x-intercept again, I put zero here. But then I don't need to multiply or anything. It's already zero and I can just go ahead and divide both sides by four. So right now I'm writing what it equals and the order pair, so you see both pieces. But eventually, once you get the hang of this, I really just need the order pair and for you to label which one it is. But when I put zero in for the x, I know this is going to be zero. I'm not even going to write that part because I know it's going to be zero. I won't be bothered with it. So I'm really just going to kind of like cover this up and look at what's left. Y equals eight. So that order pair would be what? Zero, eight. Do you have any questions so far? Sometimes when you're doing this, you'll get decimals. Like, let's say this was, get the numbers that one of them doesn't turn into, 20. The 4 would work, but the 6 wouldn't, and you would get a decimal. It just depends. And I'm going to show you a way you can check yourself as well. You may have seen this on Desmos also. Okay, so let's do that same thing one more time. So still put the 0 in. But I know that negative 6 times 0 is going to be 0. It's going to cancel, go away. So I'm not even going to look at it, rewrite it. You can if you want, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to kind of cover that piece up and just look at the 4x and the 48. And solve from there. So when I divide, what is x? Well, and I would write that as what, as, how would I write that as an order pair? Well, probably, make sure you're using parentheses. Y intercept. I'm putting zero in for X now. 
When I rewrite that, I'm going to get rid of the 4 times 0. I don't need that. and just put in negative 6y equals 48. When I solve for y, what is y? 0, negative 8. Make sure you're dividing by that negative, either in your mind or on the calculator, either or. Um, make sure you're using this negative sign if you're using the negative. Do number four really quickly. What do we get for that x in us up? The 56 comma 0. And then for the y in us up, 0. Do we have questions on that? Yes. To the math, sure. You can do some of it in your head, but I can't. I'm not a mind reader. So when you get this like on the test or something, I need to be able to see it, see your work. Any questions about this process? Okay. Um, we'll do five and six, and then I'll show you how you can check this in Desmos. So. We briefly talked about this when we were talking about slope. These letters. They don't really correlate with with where I wrote them, but that's okay. Horizontal lines have zero slope and our y equals. Vertical lines have undefined slope and our x equals. So, but we're not talking about the slope here. We're still looking for the x and y intercept. When it's in this format, it's giving you one of them. This is the x intercept. So I can write that. Now, because this would be a vertical line because it's x equals, if I have some vertical line, is that ever going to cross the y-axis? So that means it doesn't have a y-intercept. You put none in A, doesn't exist, don't put zero, because that would mean it crosses at zero. So then for this one, we're given the y-intercept. What would the x-intercept be? On one side, but prior to the line, yes. Okay. So I'm going to show these so you can kind of visualize and then show one of those on Desmos. Um, on Canvas, if you would like to also do this, there is a Desmos in page. Desmos in page, you can use that if you would like to see this also. Alright, we 
had x equals negative 1. So I can see this vertical line is never going to cross the y-axis, which is why it wouldn't have a y-intercept. And then my y-axis, or my y-intercept, I can see this horizontal line crosses the y-axis, but it will never cross that x-axis. Okay, and then let's say I put number 4 back in here. Now, because of this 56, you have to zoom out. And then on the line, you can just click it, and it'll take you to those x and y intercepts, and you can double check did you get that correct or not. Um, you, I'm going to give you like 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back and start something else. You can either try 7, 8, 9, and 10 on this, or you can do um, the Delta Math for intercepts with you on Friday. Um, but everyone do this. So previously, we were going into the Delta Math website. You will no longer be doing that. You'll be going to Delta Math strictly through Canvas from now on. So when you go into one of the side links that says Delta Math, Previously, it took you to the website, or it took you to a page that said load a new path. Now it will load into your Delta Map once you sign, if you're signed into Canvas. So go ahead, take a second, click on that link so I can make sure that works for you all. But if you go into the actual assignment, then you should be able to see it. So in Unit 2 or modules, however you want to get there, or in assignments, however you want to get there, what do you do? So in the unit two module, under intercepts, if you click on the delta math intercepts, and at the bottom, so mine automatically loads, but yours should say launch external tool, and that's how you would get into the assignment. So if you want to do that, you can do that right now. All right, so now we are going to get into graphing. We kind of touched on this with transformations. Go ahead and close your iPads. You won't need them for a second. Um, if you want to remember the transformation and graph it via that way, that's fine because it's going to end up the same way. Or you can graph it how I'm about to show you. We are going to kind of just review some of the transformations as we're graphing as well. We always, if we're graphing like this, this way, we always want to start with the y-intercept, which for number one is what? Yeah. Not negative one half. Negative one of two. That's not the y-intercept. It is zero. It's invisible. So that means we're going to start at zero, plot point at zero. And then we're going to use our slope to graph, I guess. Yes, sorry. So here we have a negative slope. That would be a reflection. It would make our slope less steep. So with this, we have to think about the directions negative slopes make. We can go up and to the right. or no, nope, that's wrong. Up and to the left, or down and to the right. We want to fill up the graph with as many points as possible. Doesn't matter which one you do first. So I'm going to start at the y intercept and then go up one to the right to the left two, as many times as possible. And then go back to the y intercept and do the same thing. Go down one and to the right two, and fill up your graph. 
And once you have all of your points, make a nice line and draw arrows at the ends because lines go on forever and ever. I kind of said these things already, but was there a change transformation wise in the y intercept? If it was, if it is now zero, what was in the original just relating this back? Was this, did our y intercept change? No. And the slope, what happened to the slope transformation wise? It got less steep, or it became less steep, and and it reflected. So just practicing that book out again. Moving on to the next one. Our y-intercept here is negative 4, which would mean what? Transformation-wise. I'm starting to hear it the start of it, but we're not finishing it. Mm. Using our vocab words, that is true, but actually using our vocab words. What did the y intercept do if it is not negative 4? It shifted down. It, shift, it shifted down 4, yes. Okay. And then our slope is 8 thirds, so sometimes you can only plot one point. This is a positive slope, so I can go up and to the right, or down, and to the left. But in this case, can I go down and to the left? No, I had run out of grass space. So I'm only going to go up 8, and to the right 3. So sometimes you only can plot two points, but you really only need two points to plot a line in general. What did that slope do transformation wise? It got steeper. It got steeper. Now it's positive. Well, if we're comparing it to this, it was already positive. But it did get steeper. So it does have a fraction, but if I calculated what that fraction would be, it's greater than one. And I can see it's steeper than just a regular one. Alright, let's do one more and then I'll have you do one and then we'll do talk about five and six. Alright, y intercept again is at negative four, go ahead and plot that point. Our slope is three, but you have to think about it as three over one. So that I can go up three to the right one. As many times as possible. Now, for this one, you could go down three to the left one, but it would be slightly off the graph. You don't need that point. You could include it if you want. Again, make sure you have arrows at the ends of your lines. Try number four really quickly.
line should look very similar to this. It should start at negative 1, so your y-intercept was shifted down 1. And then your slope was reflected, so you should be going down 1 to the right one as many times as possible, and up 1 to the left one as many times as possible. Ignore this little arrow over here. For 5 and 6, your poi bucks is going to come back into play. So if this is an x equals, and I'm, am I going to draw a vertical line or a horizontal line? So because it's an x equals, it's going to be vertical. So at negative 1, we just talked about intercepts. So it would have an intercept at negative 1 on the x-axis. And I would draw a straight vertical line up and down through that. So then 6, it's a y equal, so that's going to be a horizontal or vertical line. Horizontal. We talked about intercepts. It would have an intercept at negative 1 on the y-axis. And it would be a horizontal line, straight horizontal line through that point. So the graphing by transformations is basically the same as graphing by slope-intercept format. Questions about any of those so far? On to the next page. In these examples, we are now given the slope and we're given a point. So what's going to happen is we're going to start at the point and we're going to use our slope to keep track. So for number seven, we're going to start at the point three, zero, which happens to be an intercept. Which one? The x-intercept. So we're going to plot that point at three, zero. And then I'm going to use my slope through that point. So from that point, I'm going to go up to, to the right three as many times as I can. You don't need that extra point unless you want it. And then I'm going to go the opposite way. Go down two to the left three. As many times as I can. Now this one, I can see my y-intercept is negative 2. So I could have graphed this from my slope-intercept form. But sometimes these points and slopes get a little off and the y-intercepts become decimal. And that's when it gets a little tricky. Questions on that so far? I'm going to skip down to number 9. If we're talking about undefined slope, something in your mind that, or a zero slope, something in your mind that should, light bulb, bell should go off, is your play box. Because undefined slope is a part of that. So undefined slope means it's going to be a vertical or horizontal line. <coughs> vertical. So undefined slope is with the bucks, so that's a vertical line. So I'm still going to go ahead and plot that point, negative 1, negative 4. But now because I know undefined slopes have vertical lines, I'm going to draw a vertical line through that point. Try number 10.
underline should have looked something like this. Between numbers 8, 11, and 12, are there any others we want to go over on this page before we jump on to the next one? Okay. So on the next page, then we are now graphing from given intercepts. So it will be similar, but now we have two points. And you're just going to plot a point at the x-intercept, plot a point at the y-intercept, and graph a point, graph a line through those two points. So x-intercept is 5, y-intercept is negative 2. I'm not going to count the slope or, or try to add another point if I'm graphing by intercepts. I only need two points. I should only have two points. And I'm just going to, to the best of my ability, graph this line. Questions on that? Do you have 14? My line might be a little crooked. It's all right. As long as it goes through the two points, you're good. Make sure your lines have arrows. The next section is very similar. You're going to be given two different sets of points, though. So for 17, go ahead and plot those two points, negative 2, 3, and 2, 1. And you're going to graph a line through those two points. In both of these sets of examples, the x and y intercepts and the given points, could we find the slope? Sure. It's not what it's asking us to do. is this going to give you? Vertical. That was not good. That's okay. Um, you may have also seen you have the same, okay. the same x values in those points. And because the x values are always going to be the same, they're not going to change, that would also tell you we're going to have some vertical line. Vice versa for the y's. Now we're going to move on to the next part. This is where it gets a little tricky because I'm not, I'm not given points. I have to kind of find some points. Eventually we'll get to us. How do I solve this and put this back in slope intercept form? We're not there yet. So this could be by intercept. It could be whatever points we think of. We want to pick points that might fall on the side. So you could do a couple things. You could literally randomly go down the list and go, if I pick 0 and I put 0 in for x and then I solve for y, what happens? I could pick two random numbers, put them in there, see if that works. I could find the x or y intercept and do that and see if that works. So I want you to either give me an intercept, give me an ordered pair, or give me one number and tell me where to put it 
and then we'll solve. So give me one of those three and we'll do that. It does not matter which one. So I want you to do that, try to do that without solving. So just give me either a random order pair, give me an intercept if you can see it without doing the work, or give me just one of them. Okay, so if we're thinking the y intercept is negative 5, that would be 0 on the negative 5. So I'm going to put both the 0 and the negative 5 in at the same time. Previously we were not doing that because we were solving for the intercepts, but now we're testing. Kind of like we started to do this in slope for a pretty short time, but now we're actually going to put this in practice. So I'm going to put the 0 in for x, the negative 5 in for y, be careful because there's already a negative, and I'm going to see is this a true statement or not. So I know this is going to become zero, this is going to become a plus, is this going to be a true statement? No. So how could I change this so that it is a true statement? It would be positive five. So you can erase it or just change it. I know this doesn't work, but I know 0, 5 should work, and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And I'm going to re-put in 0 and 5. This part doesn't change, it's still 0. This is now minus 5. And now I can say negative 5 is going to equal negative 5. That is a true statement. This is one of the points that falls on the line. Give me another. Negative 1, 0. Right. And then we're going to test that theory. We're going to put those numbers in. You may need more space. Feel free to grab any paper if you would like. So I'm going to put in negative 1 for 5 and 0 for y and see if this works. So here we get negative 5. Is this a true statement? Negative 5 minus 0 equals negative 5. Yeah. Yes. That is a true statement. This does fall on the line we have found our two points. So I will say, finding the intercepts are probably the easiest, but there are other points that fall on the line as well. So you could easily try, like, 0, 0. Now, 0, 0 would not fall on this line because this would be 0 equals negative 5, and that's not a true statement. So I could easily say, that does not fall on this line. But I could look at other points. Right, I want you to try point 2. 0, 4. If I put in 0 and 4, okay, we get 0 plus 12 equals 12, which is a true statement that is one of the points. Go ahead, sir. 3, 0. So if I put in 4, Okay. 4 times 3 plus 3 times 0, basically the opposite of this, we get 12 plus 0, which is a true statement. So that is Can anyone find a point that was not an x or y intercept? It's okay if you did. So if you see something like that, you're not solving first. You're trying to think of a point that would work. It could be any point. It could be x and step, and then you're testing. Right? And the next section, though, we are trying to find the x intercepts and graph it from that. So you could solve this. You could kind of do that same thing from before. What do we think the x intercepts of 25 will be? Zero. 
Zero is going to be part of it. Do we think it's going to be zero, zero? Because if I put zero and zero, that would give me a true statement. Zero, negative one for the y intercept. And then I'm going to actually not, um, you could test it. I'm just going to kind of solve for it. So in the, this case, you have a choice. You can either pick a point or think of what the intercept would be and then test it, or you can solve for it. So you have that choice. I'll solve for this one and test the other one. In this case, we do get negative 1, which is a true statement. Just because I don't have this lot. That's bad. Okay. No. I can't plot this anymore. Sorry. Negative 1. And then the other one? Negative one, zero for the x. So if I were to test that, negative one plus zero equals negative one. That is a true statement. So then graphing the line through the intercepts, I would only have those two points and I would graph that line. I want you to try 26, and then you can either keep working in this packet or work on this map. So try 26 really quickly. Your x intercept should have been 6, 0. Your y intercept should have been 0, 2. So you don't have that much time, but if you would like to do either your Delta map or keep working in the nodes, pick one of those. You could also do the um, intercepts and graphing discussion. So you have a bunch of different things to keep working on.